All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another wrestling podcast. This is episode 261. I am your Mark of Marks Cooter. And I'm Angry Credo, the social session, bitches. Wow. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> no, this is great. No, this is what we want, ladies and gentlemen, because here's the deal. Uh-oh. For years since, what is this? You created the Marx Group. Yeah. I did some homework here. In April of 2011. Yep. And then you decided you wanted to start putting up some content. And you created Angry Cooter because you used to yell and scream at me for the way that I interacted in the group. Cooter, you can't be talking to people that way. Oh, you're such a dick. Oh my God, calm down the language. How are we supposed to grab a following if you're just gonna be a dick to everybody? And then you started filming me being a dick. (laughs) We have a video called Durant that you made three months later. Horrible video, we'll probably splice a clip in there for you because it's fucking atrocious. But. Credo likes to pull the strings, like you said two episodes ago. You like to break my balls, right? You like to get me angry. So this week, this week, excuse me, it's my turn. I'm going to piss you off. And in doing so, you created Angry Cooter. I created the list of Credo. So this week, we are going to expand the list of Credo. You getting the Sal? You believe this guy? <laughs> trying to bring Angry Credo out. <laughs> I created him. Now he creates me. This is like Batman. Yeah. You, how could you say you created me? I, You created me first. That's it. Batman and Joker, man. All right. Well, you want Angry Cooter? I'll give him to you. All bitches. right. So let's talk about the old list. Obviously, we have Japanese wrestlers. Japanese wrestlers. The problem with Japanese wrestlers, Cooter... It's just Japanese wrestling. It doesn't matter. It's not necessarily if they're in America Mm. or on WWE. It's people or marks out there who brag that they watch New Japan Pro Wrestling and how it's so great and blah, blah, blah. I've tried watching it, but I can't. I don't. I can't relate. I, I I don't see these guys all the time. I don't see them to be to be involved with who they are and who their characters are. And they're like, oh, this is so great. The storytelling so awesome. I'm like. I have no idea at all. It's like I'm watching. I I I can't I I can't get involved with them. So I have no emotional <laughs> no bond emotional with attachment. Them. No emotional attachment to J- Japanese wrestling. It doesn't matter if it's Japanese, Korean, Chinese. So what you're trying to say is you, you, j- Hungarian, what? You, you don't see eye to eye with them. I don't see eye to eye with them, Cooter. <laughs> uh, so you know, but you know, as an angry credo, you know, it's uh-huh. it's just. I hate when people are like, oh, New Japan's so great. Oh, it's this and that. No, it's not. It's not. Because unless I was living there watching it every week on TV, then maybe I can get emotionally involved. But I tried watching Wrestle Kingdom, and it, to me, it's like nothing. I'm so just you're w- I'm waiting for the American guy to come out and be like, oh, so I know who he is, and I can watch this match. Everybody else, I have no idea. With it. I, can't get, I can't get emotionally attached to it. So, so essentially, unless you're watching week to week, you can't get invested into the characters, into the storylines, and, and that sort of thing. Is that what you mean? Well, if it was in English, too, because I can't... <laughs> oh, my I, God. I, it doesn't need to have subtitles, but I... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's, I, I grew up speaking English. This isn't about what you speak or not, but it's just... I, I'm not... I can't get attached to it. It's There's no... Invo- like, nothing I can do to what they're doing to make me watch it more or to relate it better. Okay. I mean, it's it's almost like watching uh, Squid Games. You have to watch it in the dubbed English version or else uh, I have no idea what the hell I'm watching. That's and it's fair. just like, I need the dubbed version and they don't have the dubbed version. I don't want to read subtitles. I'm not here to read. I'm here to watch wrestling. Okay. All right. Obviously, the, the other uh, mention is, uh, it's always going to be Nia Jax. And before you get into that diatribe, uh, I remember... When we went to WrestleMania, and we were doing the road show when we were driving there, yeah, and we were, <laughs> yes, the lost episode. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the finest episodes that you will never hear because Credo did not push the record button twice. I double tapped it for everybody out there in uh, <laughs> TV land. If they double tapped, when I tell you, Credo literally went on a forty-minute. <laughs> 
just ballistic rampage on Nia Jax. I, and he was driving. That was the sad part. How are you driving? I'm crying, laughing so hard, just waiting to get to White Castle because I just wanted some sizzling onions on those burgers. Uh, you know, I think that could have been the birth of an angry credo then because, <laughs> you know, I, I've talked about it before. There's times in your life where you're just not going to like a person. Okay. No matter what they do, you see the person and you hate them. That's kind of where she lies into the thing. And it's, it's not on her athleticism or how mm. she's telling a story. It's just one of those things to where I'll never probably like her no matter what she does in any gimmick. I just don't like her. And I'm not saying she's a horrible wrestler. I'm not saying she's a horrible whatever. I'm just saying I don't like her. But there's come a point to where you're either good at your job or you're Nia Jax because she's hurt so many people <laughs> on her way to just being related to The Rock because that's I feel like it's a little bit of nepotism. It's not like Rey Mysterio brought his son to work day. It's The Rock <laughs> is hiring his whole family day because that's the only reason why Holy she's back shit. is because she's related to one of the guys who's not having the greatest year for himself. Uh, that is The Rock, and that's the only reason I think why she's there. That's, There's no other reason. That's, that's a little harsh. Sal, am, am I ever that harsh, dude? No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're. I think you're overdoing it, bro. She's, you know, is, some have been known to call her the Jolly Green Giant, <laughs> to where she's really green in the ring, to where. There's certain ways to sell different moves, and once again, Okuda, we're not we're not wrestlers. What no. do we have to say about no, this? No, no, no. We don't need to be wrestlers to to say like you're horrible at wrestling in a way, right? I mean, she was she was just doing stuff. I think she broke Becky Lynch's nose at one point. She yep. she injured Bailey. But in all she, fairness, that made Becky Lynch the biggest star in the business. I know. Uh, okay, so we're, we're just still just talking about Becky, and nobody remembers Nia, uh, Nia except for her hurting people, and that's it. That's all she'll be remembered for. And I don't know. I I always thought. You know, it was the whole presentation. I know we had a little joke about the mud flaps because Ralph, it used to have little flaps on the side. <laughs> Each side had a flap. And I'm like, what is this? That's not like an outfit. Like, it's the presentation. It's the pageantry people. Get so this is wrestling, not a truck stop? <laughs> yes. Okay. And so, you know, uh, for her coming out, she always tried dressing like a diva. And with her stature, she's a big girl. You mm -hmm. know, like, I don't think she needs to be put out like that to where... I loved Awesome Kong when she was in there. She made she looked like a beast, right? Yeah. As big as she is. Uh, there's a few other girls, too, that are on the indies who are in TNA, too. I but they work it, safe, too. Yeah. And, you know, they're 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 big girls, but they're made as, like, beasts, you know? Uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. I feel like her look wasn't matching who she was to me as who I thought she could be as a character. But I still don't like her. Okay. All right. And the third thing that we've always had. Wow. On the, on the list. I'm going to drinks, too, this son here. You have Patron. I have Captain Morgan, baby. Uh. So uh, <laughs> brought to you by Captain Morgan. No, you can't do that. Because uh, Angry Credo said so. That's okay. the bottom okay. line. Gotta, still got to work on those catchphrases. All right. So uh, the last thing on the list is uh, <laughs> hodgepodge tag teams. Yes, I hate I hate when it's just like, oh, okay, he's not doing anything this week. Put him together like Akira Tozawa and, uh, you know, putting him into like the Alpha Academy. Like, why? What? What does he have to do with the Alpha <laughs> Academy? And, you know, like, or I, I'm trying to think of other names, but it's not like the Heart Foundation. It's not like the Killer Bees of yesteryear, you know, tag teams. Demolition. Demolition. You know, it's just two nobodies put together like the Miz and R-Truth. 3MB. Yeah, it's just like... <sighs> I, I get that you have nothing for them this week, and it's okay, a tag team, but then they keep them forever, and then they try giving them a name, and it just doesn't work. I like I like teams that are put together that are going to be meant to be with each other for a long time. They have their name. They have matching tights, matching clothes, matching outfits. They're a tag team. I just hate it when they just throw people together, and then, then they're a team for like six months, and it's just like, I don't want to see this anymore. You know what used to drive me nuts about that, and, and I think even Cologne has said this too, was yeah. it's not just the hodgepodge of tag teams it's when they would try to do the uh theme song mashup between the two of them yeah and i think the first one i remember them doing was chris jericho and the big show mm -hmm. yep. and that was just the worst <laughs> i try to remember what jericho yes or <laughs> and they were arguing over which one should be first it should be show jericho not jericho or whatever the hell it was just stupid it's, it's like i get what they're trying to do and you know but at the same time it's like just just put a regular tag team together and just let these guys do so do something else. But so it just bothers me. I guess we, we get to a point where um, it's time for not necessarily a new list, but let's let's add to the list. Sure. So so just off the top of the head here, why don't you tell me some things that are 
bothering you that you feel like should be on the list of credo? So there are some wrestlers we could talk about in a little bit, but let's just talk about some other things that are in the wrestling world. Maybe you might agree, maybe you might not. Okay. Maybe we'll we'll keep drinking to see how far we can go with uh, what's going on, but I don't know how you do it every week. Slow down, uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so I mean, you took four big <laughs> swigs off of one shot. Um, it's okay. I, 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 I got to balance that ratio of, of mass to or so whatever. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So we we have I have a list of some names we can add to the to the list of credo. Okay. But uh, you know uh, I think first and foremost I, I hate that some people just want to be too nice. People who they hate the negativity. You know it's like oh if you don't like it then don't watch. No. It's not about that. It's like, how about listen to the fans who pay their money and, you know, they need to service us. I'm giving you X amount of money for ringside seats. I want I want to see certain stuff. So I feel like what they weren't doing for the longest time was listening to the fans. They need to listen to the fans. But at the same time, it's OK to disagree. Like, I hate this person or I hate Nia Jax. That's OK. You don't have to hate me. You can hate so and so or you can hate things, too. But it's just like I hate the people that are like, oh, stop being so negative. I'm like, no, you have to be negative. You have to you have to call the shit the shit. Right. You got to It's more than just changing a channel. It's more than just, you know, uh, you, you have to boo. You have to cheer. You have to make signs to tell them what you love and what you hate. And I think by being vocal or silent when they enter will speak volumes. You know what I mean? So I feel like. It's not so much people like even online groups like they don't want to be a part of this group because they're always too negative. But it's like we're talking about things that just bother us that we don't want to see. How can we change it? So just the whole people that hate negativity like there's got to be positive and there's got to be negative. So I think the best so, of both worlds are good. I, I sort of agree with you and I got to disagree with you a little bit. Um, do you feel like it could be a double edged sword? Because sometimes when you give the fans too much of what they want, it gets boring. Because I think part of the fun in wrestling is the frustration of not getting what you always want. It makes me think of, um, there was an episode of The Twilight Zone. It's one of my favorite ones. Uh, the guy gets sent to hell. And in hell, he's basically been given the gift of, you get whatever you want. Yep. Okay, so he goes, he picks up girls, he goes gambling, he wins every hand. No woman ever says no to him. Everything's free. That shit gets boring after a while. Do you think that maybe there needs to be a fair medium and not just give me more of what I want? Because I feel like if you gave us too much of what we wanted, we'd probably stop watching because we'd get bored because you just there's there's nothing. I got two words for you. What's that? Deadpool and Wolverine. It was a fan service movie. They gave us everything we wanted, and we weren't bored. We were happy. I'm not saying you have to do it every movie, but just like when they when they give us what we want and when we, we need it, what we need, it's like okay. it's perfect. But that's and, what I'm saying—a fair yeah. medium. Yeah. Okay. So you know, just to where it's you got to balance it out a little bit. All right. What else? I, we joke about called it, right? Hashtag called yes, it. Yes, that's my favorite. People yeah. online. I think I, I just love when people online, like, all of a sudden they think they're the smartest marks in the room. <laughs> the smarks, right? That's our, our marks for life out there. You know, you, you didn't call it. You got lucky. Hell, you didn't even get lucky. It was a 50-50 shot. But it's, it's plus, if you're a mark like us, yeah. you know, you already know the handful of options that's going to happen. Of course. But it's like, oh, saying Cooter's going to win this week. You know, or angry, angry Credo is going to win this week. You had a shot at being right, but just some people get so like, oh, I'm the only one in the world who knows what's going to happen. I'm like, dude, we got it. We know it could happen. Just stop it. There's certain people that call stupid things, and I just hate when they call that. But like, there's good predictions, and then there's just being a dick predicting things. <laughs> and so I just hate those people online who just like call it and all that crap too. So that's like one of the things. But, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what's funny? Yeah. Um, I've asked multiple people for things that I could throw at you, <laughs> right? Just in terms of show? what do you think? No, of, of things of oh. that, that you <laughs> like, would hate, you right? Me? And um, somebody who shall remain nameless said, oh, when you don't put things in the rundown, okay? And I shit you not. 20 minutes later, Credo hits me up, 
right? And he goes, dude, um, <laughs> he, I said, I, I want these things to be a surprise. He said, no, 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 you got to put them in the rundown. I got to be prepared. No, motherfucker. That's not how this is going this week. I'm leaving you blind. All right. You know, as Credo, uh, he likes to prepare. <laughs> Angry Credo is good on the flow. You okay, know? I'm, all right. I'm okay. So whatever you got, I'll take. I'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. All right. So, all right. Let's, I let's... don't know whether to keep drinking or not. I don't know what to do what you do. but uh... Listen, I, I, I drink when I'm thirsty, and I'm always thirsty. <laughs> um, all right. So let's, all right. Let's, um, let's throw some shit out here. Yeah. How do you feel about this is awesome chance? Not everything is awesome, Cooter. Not everything is awesome. Just because they had a, uh, that didn't stop slapping their thigh for like <laughs> two minutes doesn't mean it's an awesome match. Just because they went fifteen minutes non no commercial breakers, it doesn't make it awesome. You know what you are right now. What's that? You're Shawn Michaels against Hulk Hogan. You are doing the oversell on Cooter like you wouldn't fucking believe. Just be honest. Just be honest. <laughs> it's the you know. Uh, it's too much. It's too much of this is awesome. There are certain times and certain matches where it's acceptable. But when that's the go-to saying of like any match, just okay. because they're slapping their thigh for like five <laughs> minutes, it's like, all right. I hate that too. That, so so can we add slapping on the thigh to the list of credo? Sure, slapping for Okay, the... so Sal, write that one down. Slapping of the thigh. That's on the list of credo. That's it. This is funny because this is one of the ones I was going to ask you later. Yeah. Bringing replica titles to the shows. Sure. How do you feel about that? Because I'm going to tell you honestly, yeah. I hate that. I know a lot of people who hate that because I'm one of those guys. I honestly, I feel like this. If you bring one of those replica belts to the show, you should have to defend it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody should be allowed to smack you in the mouth and try to steal it from you. Uh, I'm saying, you know, uh, I don't want to date myself, but I am 42. And at this point, if I'm spending $500 on a fake title, like I want to hang that up. I wanted to make it a, p a part of something. I don't want to bring it and wear it out at like show after show after show. And I don't why I'm. I like having a title and getting it and showing it off. Or even if I was a younger kid wearing it to the show. But when you're past like a certain age. Oh, dude. And you see some of these guys in their 40s <laughs> and they're wearing one around their waist and carrying one over their shoulder. It's not the guys who bring one. Because yeah. I can maybe be like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. okay. But when you see guys with like one around their waist and one over their shoulder and then they're dragging a third one in their fucking hand, it's just like. No, no, we, we we can't do this. We can't do this. No, yeah. So don't bring it. I mean, if you want to buy it, hang it up. I bought it. I got it signed by the legendary Bret Hart, hanging on my wall. Uh, oh, you're a baller. Yeah, he's a baller now. He's a baller. <laughs> uh, actually, I got it for my bachelor party. I have the winged eagle, but I never like. I think I wore it that night when I got it on the bachelor party. But that was it. Like I didn't bring it, showcasing it around to the world. Like I hung it up, <laughs> showcased it, and now it's, it'll be immortal forever. As opposed to. I couldn't imagine dropping 500 bucks and just having wear that because it's not real and just getting it worn out and just, I don't know, just stop wearing the belts. All right. So here's another one for you that, yeah. that I, I think will probably annoy you. How do you feel about the, cause you got the majority fans, I would say are WWE fans. Cause let's be honest, they have way bigger numbers. They have way more fans. And then you have the, the minority or the AEW fans and they just can't coexist i see a lot in the the groups that they're just constantly bashing they're not bashing the product either they'll bash the product don't get me wrong but it's more of them also bashing the fans for liking the product that's the one thing that i always thought was really weird it's like hey it's kind of like politics you don't have to like who I'm voting for, but we can have a conversation on why or whatever. But I don't hate a person. I just don't have to agree with every person, right? No, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, if you look at both companies, WWE is this mecha company that has, you know, older fans and younger fans. Younger fans as kids is one of their biggest markets because you could tell a kid like, hey, WWE's on. And you could have kids ranging from anybody talking about Cody Rhodes to John Cena to whatever, right? You put on AEW, they don't necessarily cater to the younger audience. So you don't even have that younger crowd involved because any kid, you say, hey, I'm going to put wrestling on. They're not saying, oh, put AEW on. 
I think they mostly associate it with the bigger, of mark, course, you know, yeah. for for how they gear their some of their characters to to a kid audience, but like as like a hero to where the other ones really just catering to older fans who think that you know there's more of them than there are kids in the world right now, and I think what's so lacking for them is that their storytelling and their lack of a, a kid market in a way hurts them to where when it comes down to like what's on TV, kids are gonna probably lean towards WWE. But when you have these fans arguing about it like that to where, oh, AEW just came out and it's in the, you know, it's the, it's the new flavor of ice cream this week, right? So yeah. we got to, you know, when it came out, it was great. It was a different, it was something to get, you know, see what was going on. Oh, now we have a co- another a main competition. Everybody could have a job. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, All screw Friends it. Wrestling, I believe they called it. Yeah. And people were just like, oh, screw WWE because these are all my favorite indie guys now. And it's like they're all in one spot. And as we learned in the past five years, how that's kind of turned into... You can only be at the top of the, you know, uh, I don't know, the the indie markets as for so long to where, you know, fans get tired of it quickly. And I think some fans just want to hold on to that to where, like, it's still better than WWE. Granted, whoever they hate on WWE, they're just not going to watch it for whatever. And so, so what are we calling this? The, the negative fans. The negative fans. Negative where, fans on the list. Because, you know, it's like. Just because they're pro AEW doesn't mean they have to be anti WWE, or if they're pro WWE, it doesn't mean they have to be anti AEW. It's just like just because I'm talking about Cena over here, yeah, doesn't mean you have to hate it. And or... that's the thing I've always felt like, hey, you know, you like AEW, watch it. No, yeah. I don't like AEW, so I don't watch it. But I don't shit on people who do. No, yeah. I mean if that's your thing, I you, dude, God bless. Yeah, hey. Different strokes for different folks. Everybody's got different kinks. I don't kink shame, all right? I'm not that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But nope. at the same time, like, it's... The internet made wrestling good at the beginning, and then it just made it worse because people like us, big mouths with microphones, want to have an opinion when we don't necessarily know the ins and outs and we don't necessarily know what the fuck we're talking about. I think AEW has a plan, and their plan is to cater to a certain market of of fans they're they're going after the exact opposite of what wwe is and that's fine but you have to realize you are catering to the minority yep very small portion of it and that's the thing is to where if you want to compete you're going to have to compete for their fans too and if you're only going after a little bit of their fans at the end of the day, my kids aren't going to go, hey, Dad, uh, can we put on AEW? Because I want to see, you know, I think they're going to be more towards that family-oriented, a bigger name, if you will. So, I, you know, like what you like, or hate what you hate, but, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you like something that I don't like. All like right. Nia Jax so or let's, something. So. <laughs> Why wow, you just keep throwing her on that <laughs> list. All right. So, uh, some some other notable names. Give me, give me a yay or nay yeah. if they're on the list. All right. All right. Sasha Banks. <sighs> yay. Okay. Um, how about Mox? Yay. Really? Yay. What's your problem with Mox? He's a meathead. <laughs> <laughs> He's a meathead. What do you think of uh, Bronson Reed? Bronson Reed, they keep putting him up like this big guy, but he just, I don't know. He's one of those guys to where I just look at and I don't see anything that, the only thing I see is that he should wear pants every week. <laughs> He's got a nice pair of leather chub rub going that like they seem to always get a close-up shot of and it's like you should be wearing pants brother i'm a big guy too (laughs) i'm not wearing speedos every week though you know what i'm saying i'm like stay in your lane put some pants on you're not that big you're just big bones so i mean that's i mean no but it's well jokes aside you know it's they keep putting him off as like this giant yes he can do some cool stuff outside of what some of these other bigger guys are doing but at the end of the day, I just, I don't know. They've been trying so much with him for so long. They need a better character for him. Because you know who he reminds me of? Yeah. I really enjoy Bronson Reed. I think he needs a better character. He, for some reason, I see him and I see Bam Bam. I just do. I think that I he, see that with Nia Jax. Bam Bam Bigelow? Because they wear like the one-piece suit. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, they do. <laughs> so. it's, it's part of their... <laughs> Thing, but no, it's, but I don't feel like he's as big as like a, a Bam Bam too. To I wear, I didn't expect this. I'm going to be choking by the end. All right, so Bronson Reed is on more. the list. No, no, we drink on the show. Bronson Reed is on the list just because, like, he's one of those things to where they've tried so much. 
they, they've tried and tried and tried to put him on something to a, this week. The, the Raw after SummerSlam actually had him in some kind of like a, a more of a legit angle to where he looks like a threat and, and compared he, and to they, any other time. And they did it with yeah. a top, top guy. Yep. That's so, really shocking for me. Yeah. And it's almost like is, is without getting off the list, but is like, is some, are they trying to cover a Seth Rollins injury more or are they just, you know, trying to. I thought that was weird too because they had him come back and then put him in the title picture and then go with Punk and now all of a sudden now is he not going to go with, is it just going to be. No. Your, you know? And then the, the very next month, you know, he's a special guest referee. You come back too early. I wonder. So I'm just, starting to, to just think get that. him through that hump of you know WrestleMania, SummerSlam to just take a few more months off. I don't know. Uh, who knows? All right, but yeah, he's on the list. I, we can delve into that another I, time. And I think so. the next one. I think I already know the answer to this because I'm pretty sure he was on the original list of Credo. Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon. Yes, yes. So I think we've talked about Shane a lot, and then uh, I think it all went back to every year he started having his own WrestleMania match, like The Undertaker, and yeah. like. Who's Shane going to fight this year? I'm like, stop. It was, And I think this is even before they did two nights or something like that to where maybe it was. I for, I'm forgetting. But uh, it was just like, I don't want to see another Shane match. Yeah, I thought it was cool when they actually brought him back for that card that was yeah. riddled with injuries. Because that was Mania. And then when they had him in the main event against Undertaker. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even think that was the main event. But that was towards the top of the card. I, I that was a rough WrestleMania because I know they were riddled with a lot of injuries. There was like a nostalgic grab, you know, just yeah. like, oh, Shane. What are you going to do? And they just, you know, backed up the Brinks truck to him, gave him, an, brought him back into the fold. And now we see him in an office with Tony Khan blowing lines off a table like this. It's fantastic. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But yeah, it was like, all right, Shane, it's just like you're taking another spot where we can have another match. And it's like you're not that big of a showcase to have a mania match every year and he kind of not every year but i mean do you think it do you think it was wrong when they brought him back for hell in a cell with taker at mania yeah Uh, (laughs) you didn't like that i didn't like it i don't think that should have been you know what choice did they have though i know okay but you know he's on there so shane's on there wendy chu Wendy Chu. So I think she had probably the worst gimmick in NXT where she would bring up Hello and she was sleeping in the ring and she just had like a sleeping gimmick. And now, oh man, people are going to hate me online. I forget what her name was before because she actually worked a bunch of Northeast wrestling shows. Oh shit, you're right. I can't think of her name and I'm sure you guys know it, but I'm not going to look it up right now. But she had a great character. I thought she was fine. She was a great wrestler and they brought her over and I don't know like who choice this was like you know we have this character maybe you could do this just to get airtime i don't know what was said to her but she went from having a normal gimmick uh or whatever her name was uh to being narcoleptic in the ring yeah and then yeah, like yeah. she just came back and now she's like an evil uh, per, a version of that maybe or she's like i don't i don't know what it was i didn't even watch it cuz i'm like they can't just she's she's a great athlete she's a great performer She's just stuck in a bad gimmick land, yeah. and like that's one of those it's things. Like, it's like a red rooster. Release, I'd be like, go, go, <laughs> go, find yourself again on the Indies and come back or something. Because whoever decision was that, it's it, it's just horrible. It just makes her look bad. It just, I think she could do a lot more than what they're letting her do. And I don't know. I'm just, I hate these kind of gimmicks to where it's like, oh, you're a sleeping person, or like that girl uh, who took over the vaude villains gimmick in AEW. I'm like the whole black and white. Really? Thing. I'm not that Tony I Tony Storm. It's, but it's like a, How it's can you a, hate Tony Storm. I know she's not on the list. It's not on the list, but it's like it's like that kind of a gimmick to where it's like uh, a okay. it's a sleep. She's like in the black and white world. This one, she's like sleeping all the time, and I, I don't some, know. All right, it's I, just too too gimmicky. Got a couple a, good ones for you, Credo. Yeah. All right, Tony Khan. Tony Khan on the list of Credo. I think I think ever since he decided to make him the center of the show. Tony Khan. I think <laughs> before when it was like he was the savior of pro wrestling to where, oh, he bought it. He's in with AEW. He's creating this alternative uh, wrestling show. And then it became, I'm on the show. And now I'm getting super kicked on the show or, you know, uh, my life's in danger where my <laughs> Chad Khan or whatever his name comes out and sees me dying in the middle of the ring. Like it was too much Tony Khan on TV to where I'm like, you guys need to build stars, and you can't. It's just a Mark who has a lot of money and has his own show. All right, here's here's a, here's the better so question for like, you. Yeah. So you dislike Tony Khan on TV, okay? Think back WCW. No. When Vince Russo booked himself on television a lot. Yep. If you had to headline your show with either Tony Khan or Vince Russo, former guest of the show, by the way. Yep. 
which one would you rather book? Because if it was me, I'm going Vince all the way, not because I'm trying to get an interview, <laughs> but because he is entertaining yeah. and kind of knows what the fuck he's talking about and knows what he's doing. Whereas Tony Khan just, you know, I don't know what the fuck he does backstage, but <laughs> I, I think we all have a pretty good idea about what he does backstage. <laughs> and then it just makes no fucking sense once it gets to TV. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he's doing. You know, and I'll tell you what, Vince Russo, man, because you have to put yourself back in the 90s because at this time when he came on TV, it was the first time they really acknowledged like they had maybe not a writer, but like, you know what I mean? Like it was, yeah, it was yeah, somebody yeah. working something else backstage a little bit. And it was the first time they'd put that on TV in a sense. So it was kind of new. It was kind of cool seeing him. He was doing like live wire or whatever it was. Oh my and God. And all those shows yeah, and then yeah, like yeah, coming yeah, on the yeah. show. And then like it, it progressed from there. Um, and I don't remember everything in chronological order, but it was a weird time back then that it was like, it was really unique to see and him do that. And that's why he had kind of like so much power going into WCW because he was kind of in some of the biggest feuds writing it or just having something, his foot in the door with something well, like that on TV. You think about all those times where, well, that last uh, documentary that the they Death did. Of WCW. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's, I, I was more fucking better than half those people on the roster. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and may, 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 maybe uh, what happened was Tony Khan got in a DeLorean, <laughs> drove back. Over a time, yeah. Stole his stash. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, totally, but. Okay. Vince. Okada. <laughs> I think without anything else, I think this goes back to my J Japanese wrestling. Now hear me out once again to where I I don't know how big New Japan is in Japan because I, I'm, I don't live there. I, I've never grown up with it to where I know of it because of Wrestle Kingdom to where some of the guys over here were wrestling on it to where that's my affiliation of knowing Japanese wrestling or whatnot. So having Okada, who's probably one of the biggest names in New Japan wrestling or just whatever wrestling over there, to come over to a company as your the biggest name out there, to not be the biggest name on this company, it goes to show you that making a superstar is it's unique. It's not it's not unique on how they do it. It's unique. Uh, if I could put this in the words, I'm gonna do what you do. Hold on. All right, let me let me help you out here. Yeah. Because I did a little homework. Uh oh. Somebody sent me the message. Odyssey Jones debuted last week. Yep. Okay. On Raw, it garnered eight million views on all of WWE's social platforms. Okay. And in comparison, Okada's debut, four point five million views. Mercedes Monet had six million views. And Will Ospreay had 4 million views. This guy I've never fucking heard of <laughs> has outdrawn all of them. Yep. That's incredible. So it goes to show you it doesn't necessarily need to be a big name. It has to be what story are you putting him in? Exactly. Because he gave them the rub off the new day. You could see that. I always call them consequences created. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't. I, why do I always say the original name? Jesus Christ. <sighs> Uh, but you know, He's who gonna I'm make a list. About. Always calling the performer by their old name, like oh, Husky God. Harris, when uh, Bray Wyatt came out. I'm like, oh, all right, we God. get it. We yeah. know. Stop yes, it. you're so smart, you fucking marks. <laughs> oh my God. No, but that, I think that goes to show you, like you said right there with those numbers, is that <clears throat> within WWE's universe, their audience is children, teens, adults. AEW's audience is just. 20 year olds and 30 year olds and 40 year olds that are loving the old hardcore stuff of yesteryear and, and stuff that WWE is not doing blood and guts and whatever. And you bring in a big name like that, but you don't have that built in audience. You gotta, if you want to compete, essentially you'd go after that other person's audience. Right? So it's like, I know they want to be the complete opposite and be more adult oriented. But when you bring names in like this, you're just going after that niche audience. And it's like, these guys signed money for AEW just to make money. They didn't sign money to, you know, become a legend or become a star. Because if you want to do that, you got to go to the other company because that's where they at least know how to handle you and use you properly. Uh, and it's 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 unfortunate because now if he signed for, let's just say, four years, five years, maybe the most, right? 
if he signed for five years over there, that's five years even more time that people have no idea who the hell he is because he's just doing backstage uh, things with the Young Bucks or, or whatever, and they're not making him be the superstar that he was over in New Japan. People, the American audience, are seeing this guy for the first time in, in many ways, and like, who's this goofball? Like, oh, you, you have no idea. He was actually a big guy, a big champion or whatever over – in New Japan, I'm like that. Okay, that doesn't make. I'm seeing him here now for the first time, so you have to like present him for the first time. You can't just expect people to know that he was this name. Okay, we're gonna play a drinking game now, Credo. Oh. Okay, so pour yourself a shot. All right. <clears throat> Here's your choices. I'm gonna say something. Yep. If it goes on the list of Credo or, or not. Okay. You can answer it, or if you don't want to answer the question, you have to take. The full shot. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so I think this is this, just is, this way. is where we'll see how tough guy he's gonna be right now, Sal. This is where it gets fun. <sighs> All right. Nyla Rose. <laughs> okay. Next. Um Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Save that stuff why, for, the, why, for the, the paywall. We oh, gotta... saving that for the paywall. <laughs> All right. And to wrap this up, Carito, um, I did have a, a list of things I don't want you to talk about. I just want to get your reaction. Okay. All right. So these are a couple of our friends, former co-hosts, friends of the show. Sure. Okay. These are things that they think that might be on the list of Credo. Okay. Lengthy tidy reigns. Uh, let's see. Part timers. Not enough titles and too many titles. The way titles look. People getting titles when they aren't ready. People holding two titles. It's like you know me. <laughs> yes. Holding the money in the bank briefcase for more than three months. <laughs> the dusty finish. <laughs> Charlotte Flair. The Rock. Wrestlers getting crammed down our throat. We already mentioned people wearing belts at live events. <laughs> I was going to say pause, but that was the cram. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you got it. You're learning. I'm proud of you. The term X-Pac heat. <laughs> Changing names to the one name, like Theory or Riddle. Or now Umberto or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Oh, Andrade? <laughs> yeah. No, there's another, yeah. It was Umberto. Umberto Colo or Umberto, whatever. No. He's part of the tag team. No, Alberto no. Del Rio? Her, it was part of those guys that were like kissing people in the audience. I can't think of their name. They don't use them now. They used to come out. One guy used to come out with like a rose and now, I don't know. It doesn't matter anymore. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Johnny Gargano. Mm -hmm. Baron Corbin. Jeff and Matt Hardy. Sting's AEW run. <laughs> Sting in general. <laughs> yeah. That's going to piss a lot of people off. Rainbow NXT. <laughs> Rainbow the, NXT for sure. The Fiend character. Uh huh. The Streak. Yep. The Yes Movement. Kofi Mania. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> Ric Flair still on TV from time to time. And to top it off, this is the one I'll let you talk about. Okay. Yay or nay? Uh huh. Edge's return, great. I don't think anybody will deny that. When he came back at the Royal Rumble, do you think him going to AEW? This is just too long and it's dragging on. And we're closing with this. I think it killed any momentum that he had as coming back from such a big ordeal. Because it was such a big deal of him leaving the night after WrestleMania to that neck injury. To, was it like 10 plus years or whatever it was? Almost, yep. you know, to yep. where coming back from that, and he kind of had some steam. And then COVID hit and it kind of threw a lot of stupid things off the, the whack. And then... WWE didn't know what to do with him, so he decided to go elsewhere because I guess he thought at the time the other company was really hot. And once again, I you know any name, any big name that goes over there, they just don't know how to handle. And they, it's like it's the they, land of misfit toys. They get sucked down to the void. It's like the TVA. Yeah. <laughs> They're like <laughs> the TVA. It's you know it's it's the, he gets zapped out of uh, whoever how we knew him. And now you're throwing them over there going against like mid carters or not even mid carters or like newbies. Yeah. I thought it was supposed to be all elite at one point, but it's like it's all these guys that nobody knows about. And you're having them work with these young guys, and there's no, I don't know. It, it, I think it kind of hurt his goodbye 
swan song, you know? You, like think, I, it, you think it hurts his... I don't think... I, I, at the end of the day, he'll always be that edge that we know in Hall of Famer. But I think everything he's done over there, I mean, okay, maybe there's a few glimpses of like... Oh, okay, he did something with Christian. Oh, okay, he did this stupid thing from a, a top of a cage where he... But it doesn't ruin his legacy? <laughs> yeah, I think it kind of tarnishes it. I think it'll okay. tarnish it, but at the same time, I'm sure the other side would always welcome with open arms, especially for, like, a Hall of Fame event to where, you know, like, you see him on TV, you're going to be like, oh, it's Edge, okay. You know, <laughs> thank you, Edge. Meanwhile, it's on the list of Credo. Yep. He'll, he'll, that's it. It's like... All right, well, you know what, Credo? Yeah, you go over there and you never know what happens. You know what happens, Credo? What happened? I'm going to show you how this is done. Got some Patron up in here. My goodness. Patron Silver, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> the sponsor that never was. The sponsor that never was. Whoa. Never is. Sal, never gonna be. take my fucking keys. We are out. <laughs>